What's up guys, Conviction454 here, uh, or for those of you who don't really care about the videos on my channel or anything I stand for in terms of that, you can just call me Patrick Medley. Um, pretty much in this video I'm just going to talk about my experience with gastroesophageal uh, reflux disease, something I've been dealing with honestly for even longer than I originally thought. So, I'd say I started dealing with symptoms maybe last year or the year before that even. I started noticing some pretty serious chest pain or heartburn like most people with GERD get. I also get uh, indigestion, uh, trouble swallowing, difficulty breathing, chronic sinuses, and I've also had body aches every now and then. But that's pretty rare now. And so typically, doctors will prescribe you with the one or two things. Proton pump inhibitors or H2 blockers. And for those of you who don't know anything about proton pump inhibitors, pretty much, well, and H2 blockers, if you don't know anything about either one of those, pretty much what their job is to do is to reduce the acid in your stomach which for those who have GERD that's helping in a way but it's not really treating the root of the issue the root of the issue is your lower esophageal sphincter it's right at the bottom of your esophagus uh, what it's supposed to do is when or, um, when you eat that, that sphincter is supposed to tighten up so acid can't come back up and damage your esophagus uh, or even go so far as up to your nasal cavities which can give you this um, sinus problems that I have and it can also uh, not just give you heartburn but make it harder to breathe as well and so yeah I've been dealing with that for well over a year now I'd say about two years and it's been pretty rough uh, it was actually at its worst in February I've been taking proton pump inhibitors every single day um, I would show it in this video but nah. <clears throat> I'm not going to do that for disclosure reasons uh, and so I pretty much come to the conclusion that I should probably get something pretty serious done so I'm going to see a TIF procedure specialist TIF stands for transoral incisionless fundoplication and so that would involve getting this metallic ring and putting it basically around the bottom of my esophagus which should prevent reflux uh, if you do any research on it it's called TIF if you need to hear it again it's got a pretty high success rate I'd say I think the last thing I saw was about 80% maybe higher uh, but yeah I've been dealing with this for a long time um, the breathing issues aren't unbearable but like who wants to wake up every single day and worry about what they can and can't eat and you know just not and when they eat one thing just one thing <laughs> and all of a sudden they're having breathing issues like I've been dealing with that every day since February I'm tired of it now I do have asthma so it's probably worse for me than a lot of other people that are going through GERD acid reflux whatever you want to call it and so like I said, I, I've made up my mind I'm sick of it and over the past uh, month I've had three insurance plans not one not two three plans and apparently my uh, possible surgeon won't accept any of them and so now I'm about to soon purchase my fourth insurance plan which I know they accept because they're within the network I checked I asked so hopefully early August I can finally uh, set up that appointment and actually go in and get the two tests I need done which to check you for GERD they're going to do well it might be three tests there's the barium swallow test there's the esophageal manometry and then there's the 24 hour pH study uh, for those of you who j are just starting off with the diagnosis and everything, 
they're probably going to give you an upper endoscopy, maybe two. They gave me one. They told me they didn't see anything wrong. But clearly something is wrong because I'm still dealing with symptoms. And I wouldn't necessarily say they're getting worse, but they aren't really getting better. And I think it was in late May, early June. I was legit afraid to eat anything. There were some days where I would only drink water. Just drink water, maybe at the most eat a banana, apple, or crackers, that's it. And I would just eat that. And even now, I still kind of do that. Uh, but I've incorporated a little bit more uh, than I used to eat before. And, but for the most part, I still avoid a lot of the foods I used to eat. But, like, I think I just ate some chicken wings, like, the other day. And last night, I could barely go to sleep because I was, couldn't breathe. I was pretty much in pain. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty tough. Um, but, yeah, the typical things that they would tell you to avoid are spicy foods. Um, and they'll tell you to eat stuff with, you know, their alkali, like bananas, fruits, vegetables, you know. Uh, I've been trying to eat plenty of those, but lately I don't even eat much. And I think I've lost about 28 pounds. I was 180. And now I'm like down to 150 something. So it's been rough. It's changed my life. The medication that I eat, I mean, um, the medication that I take, not really helpful. Hell, even now, I don't feel so good. Some breathing issues. Uh, that's my primary symptom is the breathing issues. And I even had to upgrade my asthma medication doesn't seem to be really all that effective so it just sucks but yeah I'm definitely gonna keep you guys posted on this um, as I go through the TIF procedure uh, and yeah I hope this video reaches out to somebody who's curious about GERD or has GERD and needs some advice on how to deal with it I can most certainly say that you should just do your best to avoid the trigger foods um, and keep in mind that some things trigger certain people other things don't like for example I eat a lot of, I put a lot of mustard on my food for mustard that will bother some people when it comes to symptoms for me it doesn't bother me much so you, you have to unfortunately uh, have a little trial and error figure out what works for you but don't be stupid. Uh, I've been, I've definitely been a little stupid because I've been undisciplined with my diet. Uh, honestly, I may not even eat anything tonight, how I feel. Maybe drink some water. And I know that's unhealthy, but I mean, shoot. I'm just tired of it, man. I really am. Oh, yeah, at the beginning of the video when I said I've been dealing with this for six months. I had it, it went away after two weeks of PPIs, and then it came back, and it came back worse. So, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what that's all about. Oh, man. But yeah, hopefully everything goes well with this final insurance plan I'm probably going to try out. As well as, uh the procedure itself when I get to that point in terms of a price I think you can look at about a two thousand to eight thousand dollar range depending on your insurance and some other aspects so oh man this video is almost ten minutes long <laughs> uh, yeah that's pretty much all I wanted to say well, I guess I should add that even if you don't necessarily feel good, you still got to get up and move around and exercise some because if, if you just let yourself get unhealthy by sitting around all the time, it, it might actually make things worse. Doctors also recommend losing weight if you're overweight. Uh, if you have a hiatal hernia, 
during the surgery they'll actually rip the TIF procedure they'll actually repair that uh, I think the same applies for Lynx as well as um, Neeson so that's something to keep in mind if you're considering the TIF procedure I know I am uh, just on the path to getting better and I've been on this path for quite a while so uh, <clears throat> anyways yeah I have to end the video here guys thank you guys for watching I hope I helped somebody out there but um, just keep grinding keep moving forward that's all you can do and stay most importantly stay safe during this pandemic and all peace